Hey guys, Brent here with Train by Tex, riding around with Craig Copeland with Automotive Diagnostics uh, today in Logansville, Georgia. So we have got our first call this morning. This uh, shop has a 2007 Dodge Ram 3500 with a 6.7 Cummins diesel. Crank but no start. Uh, they said that their snap-on couldn't uh, communicate with the vehicle. So we got called out to see if we can't get this uh, resolved for them. So let's see what we can find out. All right, so automotive diagnostics doesn't play around, and uh, so we're working on a Dodge. You know, they have the factory scan tool. That's just the way. That's just the way they operate. So we've got the Y Tech two. We broke it out, and the vehicle wouldn't auto ID. You know, we couldn't auto ID. It wouldn't pull the bin. So we physically entered, you know, manually entered the bin, and at that point we could enter that network topology, that main screen that you get with Y Tech, and uh, you could see some stuff going on. Let me show you what we found. So here you are, the, the typical uh, network topology, and you know we're dealing with what we can kind of thought we would have as a network communication issues. And if you're familiar with Ytech, anytime you have a module that's not communicating, it, the the icon representing the module is red. Uh, and as you can see here, we have a couple yellow uh, DT uh, modules, which indicate that they have fault codes in them, the TIPM and the ABS. Uh, and the PCM and the TCM have lightning bolts, which represents that there is a software update for it. But we did find out from the shop that this has a, as, as a lot of diesels do, that it has a tune. So we can't really, we're not, we're, you know, we don't really want to update the PCM because that could erase the tune. And then, then, we're, then we're kind of back at square one because some of the stuff they may have deleted off the vehicle may not run right after that. So. We're going to do our best not to go that direction, not that we necessarily need to anyways at this point. But um, but anyways, uh, what we found interesting, let's go into DTCs. You can see here we have, you know, ABS module is flagging a DTC for original VIN mismatch or missing, and then a vehicle configuration mismatch, which, you know, those are obviously most likely related. And then you have ABS having a loss of communication with ECM, PCM, and ABS loss of communication with uh, TIPM. And then you have the TIPM was a loss of communication with ECM, PCM. But as you go back to this topology, like we said, you typically have no communication. You have their red, their red indicating that they're not communicating. So when we go into PCM, and let's look at data, for example, and you can see that all the values here up and down here, all these values are blank. Let's go back into let's go back into TCM now. But as you can see, we got values here. As you can see, shows original VIN, and it has a bunch of Y's. Yeah, but it's you know it's got the right VIN underneath it, the current VIN. On that kind of interesting. You go into PCM, and this one shows nothing. Again, uh, blank for current and original bin. So something definitely going on here. We're gonna look into this a little bit, and we'll be right back. Okay, so we don't technically have a communication issue. I mean, we can see that the PCM is on the bus it's you know it's blue indicating it's communicating it's not red which would indicate that it's not that it's built and not communicating of course uh, just a refresher for you guys that maybe aren't familiar with the tool uh, Ytech will have a grayed out module if it's not you know built for the vehicle just to kind of give you a heads up of how the, the topology works obviously it's going to have to have a PCM or ECM in this case they're calling it a PCM on the network topologies um, so we don't necessarily have a communication issue uh, but off, it looks like almost like a corrupted file, you know, for some reason the file, the PCM file got corrupted. Um, uh, we're also thinking about just rewriting the soft, you know, reflashing the PCM. The problem again lies that this vehicle has a tune, it's got some deletes on it, so if we update the, the software and uh, erase the tune with this, the deleted, you know, some of the after treatment stuff it deleted or DPF deleted, then the truck might be in a D-rate, most likely be in a D-rate and it won't do anything but idle. Uh, or, you know, limited driving, drivability, if you will. 
So uh, what we decided, you know, trying to talk about whether it could possibly be a power and ground issue because it's communicating, you know, it is communicating. So, but it could be that that uh, the, the power and ground circuits that allow the PCM to communicate are there, but the circuits that allow the thing to function beyond that are not. So we're going to go ahead and check power and grounds of the module, make sure we got what we need there. And uh, if everything looks good there, and uh, we might look at communications a little closer, although we think that's working. Everything looks good there, then we might have to have a conversation with the client and let them know that we're going to have to erase their tune just to see if we can restore, you know, at least partial functionality here. So let's, uh, let's see what we can find out, and we'll be right back. So uh, for those of you that are more familiar with these platforms, you probably might scream at us a little bit about some of this, but... Anyways, you know, when you're working on everything, sometimes you got to familiarize yourself with the with the product, you know, you don't, can't know it all, so. Anyways, we're, uh, you know, most diesels that I, I consider the ECM is typically, especially on a Cummins, I would think that the ECM would be separate from the uh, transmission controller, but, um, you know, not sure, so we have to look it up, and, and uh, sure enough, the tr transmission control module is in the, uh, they're using a the next generation controller, but they're only using you know, two of the four connectors for transmission control, and the uh, ECM is is separate. So, uh, of course, we're going to focus our effort on the ECM at this point. But yeah, let's uh, go back to square one and give it a shot. I think we also used the generic scan tool to make sure we didn't see anything different on you know going into the global or generic side. So, anyways, we told you we were going to look at uh, enhanced or the global side or the global side of the scan tool and see what we found, and uh, very similar. Um, we have probably a little bit more information. We have like battery voltage seems to be responding. Um, that's pretty much it. I think there was a coolant temp that was wrong, you know, showing three degrees. So um, zero RPM when cranking it. it, you know, so the data was pretty much similar to going and using the factory scan tool. It's just that there's really no data there. So um, now not that we have a loss of communication altogether. It's just, it, it all, again, it almost seems like the the ECM is uh, like a file's corrupted and it's just, or um, I guess it could be, you know, defective ECM at this point, but um, it just seems like it's got partial functionality. So let's check power and grounds and see what we find. So this is what we found looking at power and grounds for that ECM. C2 connector, uh, three powers, three grounds, and up here at pin 45 is pink and gray, which is a ignition feed. And uh, so 47, 48, 49, it looks like our grounds, 50, 51, and 60 are powers. Uh, it looks like 57 is a ground, I apologize. So 47, 48, and 57 are grounds. 49, 50, and 60 are powers. Uh, powers are red, blacks are ground. They're all in the same area of the connector. We'll this is the C2 connector on the ECM. So you can see that all of them are on that bottom left area. And they're all pretty easy, red and black. So we're going to go ahead and get at it. Okay, so we've looked at the diagram. We know that uh, the ECM has two connectors, C1 and C2. We know at this point that there is a separate transmission control module and there's a separate engine control module, if we already didn't know that, because sometimes we're not 100% familiar with the, the vehicle that we're faced with working on. Uh, but So we already know that. Uh, we went into service information, we know where the location of the ECM is and where the location of the TCM is, just to make sure we weren't going to be confused. Uh, we know that there's 60 pins, there's two connectors, C1 and C2 on the ECM, and there's 60 pins each. Um, again, we know where the location is. This is a TCM, which is on the firewall. Uh, we're obviously not going to be worried or concerned with that at this point. We're, uh, again, another shot of it, so just be aware that these Dodge Ram diesels have uh, separate ECMs and TCMs typically. Um, for those of you gasoline guys, this looks like a next generation controller um, Chrysler uses. Uh, typically they would call it a PCM because it would have the engine controls and transmission controls housed within the same box. Uh, but being that this is a diesel, uh, the Cummins typically has a separate, or every one that I've worked on has a separate ECM. So here is a view of the ECM connector zoomed, and they're zoomed out a bit. Um, this is just showing that we're on the driver's side uh, under the hood, looking down. This is the steering shaft. This is the front of the um, brake master cylinder. 
So driver mounted on the driver side of the engine block area is the ECM. Uh, again, this is one of the connectors. It's down on toward the front of the block, but down a little bit in the engine bay. Um, you can see here we're showing the connector that we're actually concerned with checking power and grounds on. Because again, we've looked at the wiring diagram and we know which connector and what you know what pins in that connector we need to to work on to check power and grounds. Um, this is that connector from the uh, viewed from the driver's side front wheel well area. There's just a slightly better shot of it, I guess, and then they're zoomed in. So uh, we've talked about checking power and grounds uh, before. Uh, in this case, we're going to check not only power and grounds, we're going to check uh, ignition feeds, 5-volt references, and communication wires. And, and we did so, and uh, we'll show you the video of at least the communication side. But we checked the communication at the ECM and compared it to what we were seeing at the DLC to make sure it was good. And again, we'll show you that video in just a moment. But here it's just showing you our connections at the C2 connector, the ECM, checking power ignition and grounds. And again, we won't spend a lot of time going over uh, voltage drop testing or load testing power and grounds. Uh, I believe we've done that before, and if not, then we'll be, be sure to do so. You just want to make sure you load test it. Whatever your method is, make sure you're being you're putting a load on that circuit and you can check that that circuit's ability to actually carry current or carry a load. Don't just use a test light. That's not really enough of a load, guys, for this type of stuff. Uh, especially if you look at, at the thickness or the gauge of these wires, um, that's a pretty good indicator of what kind of current these circuits are, should take. Uh, and a test light's not going to be enough. I can't remember exactly how much of a current those things draw, but it's not enough. Um, voltmeters um, just don't do it. Uh, you know, when you're you can use a voltmeter to or a scope to do load testing on a circuit that's working uh, in under its normal environment. With but with PCMs, what I'd recommend. You know, there's different scenarios out there, but typically if you've got a hard fault that's not intermittent, I'd recommend load testing them with at least like a, a 9004, 9005 halogen bulb. Um, there's a lot of cool tricks out there, guys. You, you, I don't need to bore you with the details of them, but, um, you know, you would put your, however you're going to check it, and I would recommend an ECM like this, use piercing the wires because back probing can cause problems when you have this many wires in one area. You may not know what circuit you're actually touching. You maybe assume you're in the right one and you're not in the right one, or you might actually, that pr that back probe pin might go sideways within that connector and maybe short two circuits out together that are not necessarily good, and we're not looking to let the smoke out of this machine yet. So um, I recommend piercing them. Just make sure you seal the holes and that you don't, you know, don't destroy the wire, just barely uh, puncture the uh, insulation and then go one step further when you're done when you're satisfied with checking the power and grounds piercing them remove that connector and do what we call a pin drag test just check the terminal's ability you know terminal tension or terminal's ability to to, to properly have a good connection on that circuit so um, but you know whatever reason way you go I, I, we would again recommend piercing like we have here we show you are showing you this one is a ground circuit. Um, you know, you would have a lead going from that probe, and then you would have that lead. You know, on the ground side, you would have the lead going to the battery positive, but you would have some kind of load device in series in that circuit, like a like a nine double oh four nine you know double oh five bulb or whatever uh, it is that you use. And if you're checking a power side, of course. The other end of that lead is going to be at the negative side, and you're going to have that load device, um, you know, in series in that circuit while you're checking the power uh, to that EC, you know, that ECM in our case. So that's uh, that's just wanted to kind of go over that portion with you. Um, again, if you have any questions hopefully we have a video that kind of goes into more detail of load testing but if not we'll be sure to put one together uh, uh, oh I, I apologize so what we're doing here is just showing you that we did look up the can communication circuit and so we scoped that and uh, compared that to the DLC which again we'll show you that video in just a moment so so we got our trusty U scope here from AES Wave, and we're checking just for kicks and laughs while we're in there. We're going to check, for, make sure the can looks good, can high and low at this uh, ECM C2 connector. This is can high. 
it looks pretty good. Uh, two and a half, three and a half, roughly. Uh, and here's can low. So can high was C2 pin terminal one, uh, white with a green tracer. This is can low, which is C2 terminal 21, white with a blue tracer. Let's see, this is can low. Uh, say two and a half to one and a half. It looks pretty good. Okay, so we've checked power and ground. We've checked communication, and everything looks good. We suspect we've got a bad module here uh, and one in need of being replaced, but we figured we would try to update it just in case. That's what we're doing now. So we'll uh, cross our fingers for these guys and load some software and see what happens. All right, so now we're in the details. We have original VIN and current VIN. Okay, as you can see, key on, engine off. The uh, values are there, and they're, they seem relevant. So in the DTCs we have heater circuit faults, but as you recall, he, this thing had a tune and it has uh, some exhaust, after, you know, some exhaust work done. So that's probably part of that. Let's see if this thing fires up. <laughs> this thing is running, buddies. <laughs> Well, if you haven't noticed the uh, change of scenery, it's because I managed to lose or delete the conclusion video I did. So here we are in conclusion. The, there was obviously something going on with the ECM, and it appeared that it was like a software corruption of some kind. So and we weren't really expecting uh, that, that loading factory software back on the ECM was fix it. Uh, but in our case, uh, it appeared to, at least in a short-term basis. Uh, we weren't sure it was going to be long-term, so we made sure that we let Automotive Diagnostics client, the shop owner, know that it may not be a long-term solution. You know, if, Had we known why the files were corrupted, then we might have a better answer, but unfortunately we didn't. Um, but as long as, you, you know, as long as we let the shop owner know that it may not be a long-term fix, it, it may end up needing the ECM or something like that, then we're, we've done our part. Other thing we warned him about is because it had a fa uh, aftermarket tune and it had some exhaust components deleted, we wanted to make sure that they knew that uh, there may be a possible derate strategy or something in place. But uh, we didn't experience that, uh, sh you know, after the vehicle was running. But uh, so we're not sure if it's going to have something like that. But certainly some of the later model diesel applications would. So again, just wanting to make sure that the, the shop owner knew to tell his client these things. But. Anyways, uh, you know, it wasn't a super complex or sophisticated case study, but uh, we thought it was interesting nonetheless, and we were just hoping that somebody could benefit out there from uh, watching Craig and I collaborate and kind of work through this problem and come to a conclusion. So it was certainly a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun riding with Craig the couple days leading up to Nace Auto Mechanica. Had a great time, super hospitable guy, uh, really great guy, uh, great company. I wanted to thank all the members of Automotive Diagnostics. I know at least five of them. I think they're up to seven because they have a couple new members, but Adam, Caesar, Tim, Craig, and Patrick uh, really appreciate them letting me ride along. Uh, it was a lot of fun. I uh, had a couple cool cars with Craig and it was really, it was just a great time, uh, great week. And so I wanted to thank them. And uh, if there was any questions or concerns on the diagnostic, or the diagnosis or, or the case study in general or if you had any experience to share with us that's really where the value comes in is when you guys interact and, and share your experiences and and ask questions and, and even answer somebody else's questions so uh, don't hesitate to do so we, we really appreciate when you do uh, so thanks for your time and attention and uh, take care